guest. My goodness, it's been a long time since we had Mark Long on. Hope you're doing well, my man. And uh, I think the last time we had you on, uh, we, we, we have to write you a thank you note for helping out the show with some of your Leonard Fournette comments. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Well, that's, uh, yeah, you and I were on that train long before it it uh, departed. But, uh, yeah, big day, pro day. I don't know. I, I'm curious. I was just listening to you guys. Can you can you play fast if you're slow? Yeah. I mean, I, maybe. But, uh, I mean, you know, I don't know how fast. Can you play at the level Urban Meyer wants you to play if you're slow? I don't know if that's the case. But yeah. uh, maybe. I don't know. That's a good call, Mark. Earlier in the show, you know, everybody runs a 4-4 now. You know, I mean, you know, you were doing this. You've been doing this long enough. I mean, 10 years ago, even when Austin came out, 4-4 was a special time. And I'm not taking anything away yeah. from guys that run 4-4, but it does feel like everybody runs a 4-4. So isn't it to the point now where, like, it feels like everybody's fast, whether you're a defensive end, a linebacker, a wide receiver? Heck, the quarterbacks are fast. Yeah, no doubt. And even, you know, Trayvon Grimes, who's one of the fastest players, one of the fastest receivers, certainly at his size, 6'5". And he took exception, real exception, to somebody asking him afterward whether he ran a 4'5". He shook his head. He's like, what? No. He's like, it definitely was lower than that. I mean, like, like I mean, you might have – I mean, you could have asked him, you know, anything in the world. You asked ask him if he told him he threw like a – five-year-old boy and he would have taken less exception to him running a four or five today uh and he didn't run a four or five he said he ran a between he, he was time between four three five and four four one it is different uh but it's also weird because it's hand time and you know you you get these ranges it's real hard to pinpoint anything like if you go back to the combine it's all digitally timed everybody's on the same kind of scale this is totally different all these hand times uh but yeah i'm with you it used to be four four was was an eye popping number, and now uh, these guys it's it's uh, four three, and you know if you're not in the four threes, then you're slow. And a lot of guys are four two, high four twos, right? Crazy. Mark, you know, when you yeah. go to the combine and you see these 40 times and these broad jumps and uh, these three cone drills, like th- those always mean something. And, and those help like, you know, propel a guy possibly up the draft board. When you see 4-3 after 4-3 this year at everyone's pro day, and let's be honest, these pro days are designed uh, to benefit the, the players. I think the combine is designed to benefit the coaches because at the combine you're going through you know five hours of sleep a night, you're going through meetings, you feel drained, you feel exhausted, and now you have to run your best 40-yard time in, in, in Indianapolis. It's different at the pro day. So do you see coaches putting so much stake as they usually do in these 40 times as they do at the combine, or is film going to be the number one deciding factor? I would be shocked if it's anything but film, really, honestly. I mean, I think there you can certainly help your case, and I think Marco Wilson is a perfect example, the cornerback at Florida, you know, best known now for throwing the shoe and costing the Gators the LSU game. But, you know, he was a guy who certainly upped his status, and I think somebody will take a maybe take a little bit of a flyer on him and more so than they would have uh, just because of his times today and his reps and all this. But he also admits that, you know, he spent the last three months working out at a camp, an Exos camp in, in Arizona, getting right, preparing for this. And that's probably the difference, Austin, even from, I don't even know, I don't know if you did that, if you went to a camp for two or three months to just prepare for, the, the, for, the, for your pro day. But, you know, normally you do that, maybe you do that uh, before the combine, but now yeah. with no combine, these guys have had more time to go to these camps and just on the things that are hap- going to happen at their pro day. And that they haven't changed. Like it would be, what would be more interesting is if you go to these pro days and they created something new for you to run. Uh, hey, hey, today we're going to run the 60 yard dash or today, Hey, we're going to, we're going to run, you know, we're going to run the hundred yard dash today or something different. But I mean, they all know what's coming. It's the broad jump. It's the, three cone drill it's the 40 it's the 225 pound weight what if they put you know 300 pounds on there one time and surprise you <laughs> i mean you know so they're all you know they're always just you know they're just it's like it's it's coaching to the test and yeah. that's what these guys are doing they're coaching to the test they know the test they know what the what the questions are going to be on the test and they're able to prepare for it so i don't think it's a very good indicator of of what kind of football players are going to be. I certainly think tape 
should be number one. And if it's not, then, you know, I can't imagine these guys will be in their positions for very long if they're not looking at the tape and using tape number one. But I, to that, with that said, four head coaches showed up today, Urban Meyer, Matt Rule, Brian Flores, and Zach Taylor. Uh, four guys showed up to watch the Gators in person. Yeah, I think a lot of that, too, is, is uh, Mark Long with the show. Associated Press with us here at Action Sports Jacks on ESPN 690. I think a lot of that's kind of like what we do in interview sessions, Mark. It's like, hey, if you're there and you, you can get a little nugget here or there, you know, like if you're in person, maybe somebody else tells you something about Kyle Pitts or Kadarius Tony that you hadn't heard yet or you didn't see, you know, and some of that's just I want to see him up person. I, I, I want to put a little pressure on him. But I, I'm totally with you guys. I think the pro days now, are, it's like, an Ivy League kid making an honor roll in high school. I mean, it's a foregone conclusion that some of these things are automatically yeah. going to happen. And I think it's film, and I actually think interview comes into play next. And I think down the list is this pro day. You've covered Kyle Pitts. You've watched Kyle Pitts. He's a special guy. Uh, is there a sense that he's any bit overrated? I mean, people are Ooh. just gushing about Get Kyle your Pitts. Mouth. That's what I Stop. said. That's what I said to him. Stop. Unbelievable. Shut your mouth. That's what I this said to guy, him. Yeah, unbelievable. Come on, Brent. This guy's fantastic. You've seen him play. He, if you've talked to him, you know that he's a good human being. He's a really good human being. He's not going to embarrass your franchise. I mean, he's got the NFL shield tattooed on his left pec. That, to me, that jumped off the, the chart to me today. If – if I'm on an NFL team and I see, you know, here's this guy, and maybe I can't imagine he did that, you know, but I'm, my guess is that's the goal. That's always been the goal for him. And you, you tattoo it on your chest to remind yourself that this is the goal, to play in the NFL. He's a good kid. He's never been in trouble. Uh, you know, he he's, says the right things. He does the right things. Uh, I can't imagine that, that this guy would be overrated at two – or 12 or anywhere in between uh if the jags weren't picking one i'd be standing on a rooftop somewhere screaming that the jags should should be taking kyle pitts i think he's fantastic i think he's going to be a stud star right out of the gate and there is zero chance this guy is a bust brent you happy with that you yeah, that's that cool. answer. The guy's got the NFL shield tattooed on his chest, and he's not in the NFL yet, man. Okay, yeah. like, listen, I can get I can get Rihanna's name tattooed on my arm. Doesn't mean I'm going to be with Rihanna the rest of my life. Probably not going to happen. I love the mentality that Kyle Pitts is bringing to the table. Brent, take note, please. Sounds like you're safe, Cody. That's good. <laughs> oh, I would say so. I would say so. Yeah. We're all listen, good. I'm not trying to suggest he is. I, I just feel like, listen, we've done this with Trevor Lawrence for the last few months, right? We know he's hyped, but I feel like with Trevor, he's been hyped since eighth grade. He delivered in high school. He delivered at Clemson. Like, there's no evidence that he won't deliver, and I'm not saying that Pitts hasn't delivered. I just feel like he is, along with Trevor Lawrence, I think he is second to Trevor and, and maybe first as the guy that is hyped the most in this draft. And That's a lot to live up to for both guys, uh, not just Trevor, but Kyle Pitts too. And I'm starting to think Zach Wilson might be that in that conversation, but uh... – you know, and some guys can handle it and some guys can't. I think Kyle Pitts can handle it. He said it today. He's like, at the end of the day, with all the preparation and through the years, I feel like I'll be the best to ever do it. And, you know, he's not a guy who's made a lot of headlines with his mouth. True. But today it was, you know, there was a little bit of – it gave you a little insight into what this guy's doing. The measurables are off the chart. What we've seen, his moves are off the chart. And now even his mindset, his mouth, whatever you're going to call it, off the chart. And it, it, I, I would be stunned. I would absolutely be stunned if he's not the real deal. Mark, if uh, the Jags end up with Kadarius Toney at 25, first of all, do you think that's a, a chance that they go that way? And if they did, would the Jags fan base or should the Jags fan base be excited? Yeah, yeah I don't think they're going to go that way. I just think they've got, I think they've got too many holes on the other side of the ball. To, to not address those that early with that pick. And and maybe I'm crazy. Maybe I'm not seeing this. I know Urban wants another receiver, but when you look at, you know, the two guys they got in free agency, the two guys they're returning, three guys, really, if you throw in Colin Johnson, I'm, I'd be a little surprised if they went there at that pick, knowing that, you know, they really do need probably a, a third cornerback. They probably do need, uh, you know, more help at the pass rush. They probably do need, you know, 
another interior defensive lineman, especially with Tyson Alu Alu, you know, having the reverse course. They probably, they definitely need a safety. So, and and you can't re, you're not going to rebuild that. They brought back five defenders. You didn't think they were going to bring back. You know, I, I thought said goodbye to all five of those, thinking you know there's no way they re-signed five guys. I th- I thought we'd never come back. They're all back. So to me, you haven't touched that defense enough. So I'd be a little surprised. But if they do, you know, I I think Jags fans could be excited. I mean, Kadarius Tony was way faster than I thought, and not that he's he wasn't fast. I thought he had this burst and he had, was quick. But I thought the forty would be a little bit would maybe test him the, the range of it and not saying it's a 60 or a hundred yards, but I just thought he wouldn't do white quite what he did today. And when he ran four, three, eight, uh, I was pretty impressed. I, I thought, okay, that's, that's, you know, and even though we sat here and we said everybody runs in the, you know, four, 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 three, I, I still was a little surprised that he was down that far. And, uh, you know, clearly the guy took a huge step last year, caught almost everything thrown his way could, obviously can be a special teams uh, upgrade and is, is a legitimate receiver, not just a slot receiver, but I think he can play just about anywhere out there uh, and make you better and do some of the things that Urban wants to do, which is, you know, those end of rounds, the things that we thought Curtis Samuel would do if he signed with the Jags. I, I have no doubt that Kadarius Tony could and would do those things for the Jags. I just, I'd be a little surprised if they went that direction. Uh, if you go quarterback and receiver first first round. Austin, it sounds like it might have been a 30 to nine and a half yard swamp sprint in Gainesville today. I know, you're not lying, or else they're, they're running downhill a little bit. And hey, Brent, listen up, man. I understand that we have lawyers on standby, we have lawyers on retainer, but I'm not going to sue Mark Long for plagiarism because verbatim, literally verbatim, said the exact same thing that I said to you when you asked me how I'd feel about Kadarius Tony going to the Jaguars at pick number 25. It's insane. Well, hey, We're on this, the same page. By the way, this is scary for one of wow. you, if not both of you. You, that you're both saying the same thing. Exact same thing, I know Mark. both of you, but that's scary. I'm with you, man. <laughs> I feel like you guys need a third person on the show. I'm coming in, and we're just going to meet. And then the two of us, me and Austin, are just going to team up on Brent every day. That sounds like a plan. <laughs> Fair because enough. our poor producer can't take much more. So I, I agree. We need somebody new to be up on. <laughs> hey, uh, let me leave you with this. Uh, it just it's, it's been a while since we caught up with you, but where's your confidence you know urban uh your confidence level in in all this as you've seen it's now what we're like 77 days into urban there's so much momentum around here there's a buzz around here uh, how do you feel about what's going on in jacksonville and do you think it's going to work are you a believer in trevor are you, are you a believer in, in what they're building i am a believer in in that he is ripping up the playbook that the jags have had for two decades and plus. And I'm not talking about the, the on-the-field playbook because I think he's going to rip that up too. But I'm just talking about the franchise playbook. And it's been the same thing. And it's been a little bit of wash, rinse, and repeat around here. And to me, you know, he's been handed a, you know, a little bit of a silver platter here with the number one pick and Trevor Lawrence. But I'm just talking about everything else. You know, he, he clearly spent money on his coaching staff He's planning to spend money on on the, the facilities. Uh, he's, you know, I heard, you know, he's wiped out, basically taken over the majority of the offices yep. in the in the building there. And guys are people are working up in the press box <laughs> that he's taken away, you know, taken away office space for to expand everything. So what he's doing is changing the playing field for the Jags, and I think that to me is what gives me confidence that he's not coming in and that it was a good hire and that he's not coming in here and saying, I'm going to do things the NFL way. He's coming in here and you're going, no, 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 this NFL team is going to do things my way. My way has been proven to be a winner at Utah, at Bowling Green, at Florida and Ohio state. I know better than they've known for two playoff appearances in the last 20 years or whatever it is. And, uh, I know better than them and we're going to do things my way. And that's what gives me confidence in urban Meyer that, that he's not coming in here and and kind of bowing to the way the NFL works everywhere else. Looks like he's going to come in here with some some clean ideas, some fresh ideas, and uh, rip it all up and do it right. Yeah, he's gotten it, no doubt about it. I kind of like that idea of it too with Urban Meyer. All right, Mark Long, Associated Press, thanks for stopping by, man. Come on, come do it more often. Anytime, guys. Anytime. Yeah, right. you got my number. You bet, uh, Mark Long, <laughs> from the Associated right. Press. Appreciate it. 
Thank you, man. Uh, you got